Welcome to Michigan Mud Mechanic. Today I'm getting onto the Jeep Compass and we're going to try to make it shift. So we're going to pull the valve body out of the transmission and try to replace the pressure solenoid. So let's jump right into it. Alright, we'll just let that drain for a while. So we left the bolts along the front and we're just going to let it drain in the back now for a while. Like I said, these things hold a lot of fluid. Alright, so we got to get this plug out and this plug out and this thing disconnected. We gotta get the filter off and then all these front bolts come out and there's some other bolts that need to come off. I think the best way for me to show you what bolts come off is to just take this out and then take a picture of what bolts you take out. But I am going to record it too so let's get going on that. So when you're under there you take off all five of these bolts in the front. These two that are next to the shift uh, bar thing and there's going to be two here and then two here and this will be your bracket that creates the one for the filter and these two here are the filter now the ones that are stepped down like this one here and this one here are your short bolts you notice you have two short bolts don't forget to put your collar in there I think that's the easiest way to show what bolts have to come out. There we go. There's that one. I'm not replacing the valve body, so I don't want to take that bracket off. I just want to replace... I just want to replace the P0777 solenoid, that's bad. What is it? It's a secondary pressure solenoid. Something like that. So, yeah, it was just tab and pull. Alright. There's the electrical. That's out of the way. Right, we got to get this stuff off. This bolt and this shift rod thing here. So there's a shim in there that'll slide out if you're not careful. Uh, let me find a wrench so I can get that taken out. Got to hold the valve body up. Not easy. 
There we go. The hard part is trying to get this pin back in the right position. On this guy right here. The stepper motor, I do believe. The problem they're saying that we have is with this one right here. And I believe I have a new one for that. Alright guys, so this is a valve body I bought for a Nissan Altima. And it didn't work. I ended up replacing the whole transmission. So I pulled the new valve body back out of the transmission and kept it. And this was the pressure solenoid out of the Jeep. I pulled the one out of here and put it in the Jeep's valve body. You'll notice the difference between the Jeep and this one is there's no sensor here. Where the Jeep does have a sensor. you also notice that this was very tight. It was actually like sitting right here on the Jeep's valve body. And that thing's supposed to freely move. So this is actually the one out of the Jeep. I replaced it so it's freely moving in the Jeep. And this one freely moves here. But it did not freely move in the Jeep. So that might have been causing problems. To get that to set back where you want it. There's a hole right here that goes all the way through. And once you have like, I just use this piece of wire, but once you have that in there and you put the valve body back in the transmission, you'll be able to pull this wire all the way through and yeah, it'll be set. So now we'll just gotta, gotta uh, drive it and find out if it worked. Okay, so you have your two short bolts, one's here. That's where your short bolt goes there. And then the other one's there is where the other short bolt goes. This one, that one, and that one. Hold your filter on. That's all you should have left now. Oh, and you can pull your wire out of the hole. You can pull your wire out of the hole. Make sure your bushing's in your shift tube. That's a short bolt. And that's the short bolt. So we're gonna tighten all the bolts to torque and then we're gonna put the filter on and then we're just gonna put it all back together oh no I gotta put this guy on so I'll be back I'm running out of battery alright so I didn't get very much of it on film uh, hopefully I can put something good together this transmission should hold eight and a half to nine quarts of fluid um, there should be some fluid in the torque converter I got five quarts it's expensive and I have no idea if anything I just did is going to do anything. So at $11 a quart, it's like $60 just to see if this will work. Um, to be honest, this thing is just kind of in my way right now. And I want to be able to get rid of it. But I want it fixed before I do that. Um, if I can't get it fixed, it's going to have to go back into storage for a little while. So let's get the fluid in it. And let's see how it runs and drives. If this works, I'll still need to replace this subframe.
All right, no dipstick, so what else we can do is hope that was it. All right, that's an incredibly messy job. I got to connect the battery, and then we got to put the air intake thing on there. Um, so we got to move some cars out of the way to be able to even attempt this. I think we still got enough daylight. Let's go ahead and move these out of the way and see if uh, see what we can't can't do. I know we got good oil pressure because you'd hear it in the motor if we didn't. Uh, so I believe the sensor's out there. Um, the brake, it's saying, yeah. I'm gonna address these lights, but I'm not messing with anything until after I know this thing's gonna run and drive. All right guys, here we go, first test drive. I know I still got lights on. No point in fixing all this stuff if it ain't gonna run and drive. Oh, that's what I didn't want to see as a police officer. guys this camera just keeps messing up so I lost all my audio on the test drive that's why it sounded like crap um, hopefully I'm just trying to get an ending to this video we're gonna work on this 
Jeep Compass more now that it runs, drives, shifts, all that good stuff. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.